So if it, all the keys are really wobbly, um, and it's largely because of these the bushing. It's the name for it. The that felt it's all worn. It's so loose in the holes, but um, if I do see, look at that. No movement anymore, and that is simply from taking the felt and and re re putting it in there, rebushing it. So, and then I'm testing it with the actual pedal, the one of the pedals from there that was loose, and I just take it in. Take the strip of the thing like so, and if I put it in, push it, then, and then I should, uh, I'll, I'll cut the ends ends off and then glue it with PVC, apparently PVC E glue, and uh, I gotta rebush, rebush all of the keys because they they're all wobbly. Um, the black ones will be a little bit tighter, but yeah. So here I'm cutting felt for underneath the keys. These are for the balance board, and I'm, as you can see, I've done it in squares since it's it's just easier. And um, I see it's still muffling the sound effectively, and these are for the keys. So just pull pattern. So these two, there are nothing underneath them. And they return, but you can hear the knocking on the wood. And this one, there's nothing underneath it. It's raised. This one, I've put the key, um, some felt underneath it, and it's moving up and down how it should, and it's very muffled. But this one, there's nothing underneath it. And yet it's not hitting the wood and it took me a while to figure out but you can see it's balance rail pin when I try push it down that pin is being pulled bent very slightly and so I realized what's stopping this this key from hitting the, reaching it all the way down because I need to bend that pin back and now as you can see this key has returned to the height of all the, of the others and when I drop it also reaches the bottom so the pin is now now in the correct position and I can begin adding the felt so you can hear the major difference this covering made and now they are all as it should be so I've gotten some parts bridle strips for the back check of the hammers these are for rebushing the inside of the keys by the pins and these are the balance bar pin holders and these are for right in front underneath the keys they, they're a lot thicker individually and then this is the back called the back touch so went all the way very far, like th about like thirty k's or something. So I'm busy with the key bushing process. Most of the keys, when they start originally or as they are currently they they're looking like this this is the f this is the, on the the keys with good con in good condition so there's really not much felt in them at all and so i've scraped them all out with what the americans call an exacto blade and they're all looking scraped the empty to look like so 
but now I'm not I'm I'm gonna need to figure out a system of measuring the correct size because when I began the key bushing these two came out really well so they they can rise up and f fall on their own motion and there's no horizontal motion anymore there's a little bit uh, by some of them by the central the, the balance rail key bushing but most of them are right there's enough so it's not moving much these two are really good these aren't moving either but as you can see they don't go all the way down this way this one's actually gotten better but it's not going all the way down particularly around the black ones uh, been struggling with or it's a bit more tricky with these since there's less space um, so I'm gonna do some more measuring so that when I start them out before I put the felt in that the empty socket needs to be of a certain size and if it's too tight before I add the felt because this is the thinnest felt that I've I've got available and I'm gluing it in with wood glue because the animal cold hide glue it's it's not available hot hide is not available so measuring the size and if it is too small before I add the felt then I'll just scrape it a bit larger and what I'm trying out for the black ones um, that if it's too tight that I only that I leave the last see these one I accidentally I, or I, I scraped out but the others I'm not going to scrape out on one side because most of these these the blackies they all are uneven I saw on other pianos it seems the same as well so on the thin side I'll add the felt and not scrape then on the thick here because the wood glue makes it makes it stronger so I'll see then and then there's not a much much horizontal motion on these but it's it's still not not perfect for the blackies so the blackies are I need to struggle fiddle with a lot more but the black white here yeah. putting new key pin felt on quite simple all of the key pin felts were were gone by the front and by the balance rail they were pretty deteriorated so there was basically nothing it was too thin so I had to get new ones as well I mean I was prepared to, to cut my own ones but uh, apparently they weren't good enough <laughs> so these these ones are quite tight and so I just use a, a tweezer or the actual key to push them down and raise them up So I've been putting most of the key, key bushings back in, all of them, but these are the ones that I've done for the front pin. I haven't been doing any of the balance rail. But what I've been, what's come to my attention is that quite a number of these front key pins, they've been uh, twisted sideways, probably as a, as a quick fix from the previous technicians. They didn't want to do the rebush re the keys, so they just, uh, turn these oval so that there was less space in them but um, just to demonstrate how the effects because I've used the same measure f for the keys the key bushing inside so the gap in the space inside each of these key bushings with with millimeter variance they sh they are all basically all the same and yet if i put these keys you'll see which ones return out of here so what's clearly getting stuck are these two keys each time um you know the, this one it'll it'll rise and go up but this 
this white one keeps getting stuck yet it's the same size felt as the others but if I remove that key and just the others for comparison it's quite I'm not sure it, it doesn't seem to be showing so well here but if one looks at it from above with one's eye, I can immediately see that this oval it's, it's turned sideways. That one's straight. This one's also a bit skew. And so I'm going to twist them and you'll see the difference. And now that they're straightened out, they're all returning. Just a bit of glue. If there's any excess glue at the bottom, I'll wipe that away. level and then I take the my DIY call and shove it in there and then I put it onto my my bonfire and I let it draw up dry for for an hour and they'll all be in like so and after an hour I repeat the process So I've been storing the keys in in just a bag like so, but because the, the keys are really smelly, I've taken cotton wool and I put some essential oils on and I just threw the patch of cotton wool inside the bag and it must have moved and now the cotton wool was sitting on top of here and I've managed to wipe most of the cotton wool off. But it's really messy and it's and what's come off of the cotton wool is clearly damaged the key and now it's if I was doubting earlier it's clear that this is an ivory key otherwise I wouldn't have done this to plastic um, quite uh, disappointed I think I might have ruined this key accidentally key top so give an update later the key bushing on all the keys on the front key pins none of the central balance pins but now it's I'm going to level out the keys at the front key pin because the, the keys would be resting up and this is now the, the most depressed position or most down um, but if I take this level so it becomes very clear that the keys are all at different heights and so I'm going to take um, little bits of cardboard or the, the paper cuttings and luckily these weren't deteriorated on the piano too bad so I'll be taking those and then um, packing them underneath the felt to put all these keys onto the same level and then you'll see the after effect here I've done the first 28 white keys since the black keys need to be done like so up, up to white key number 28 and if I shine a torch through the back um, I'm pretty pretty pleased with them you know I'm not <laughs> I'm just a hobby pianist so if there's any nanometer differences I'm not going to feel the touch but they they all to the eye equal my first key leveling process uh, turned out to be just doing because I was doing without the actional weight at the back of the key so it was actually just changing the key dip 
and you can see now that at least the, the white keys for the what I did initially the key dip is completely equal but the resting key height is not and obviously I'll need to do s squaring or spacing of the keys but the key height's not not the same for all of them um, and it's quite tricky because the tutorials online they just show how to raise keys if they aren't level but if I put the level on it actually brings the keys down that are too high and so and so when I have the level on it appears like they're all level but then the moment I take it off the, the height changes um, and so there weren't many videos explaining that way but I figured I just took these uh, like wood wedges um, and I took the highest keys because I can make the keys lower by sanding but I don't want to do such long term consequences I'd rather just put the papers and raise the other keys all to the same level as the ones that are too high and so I checked out this this key um, to be very high and so I put a weight on put a balance you know about four of these with a ice cream stick under so that when I put it underneath it doesn't lift up the key but that if I push it it doesn't go down at all and I made another structure as well the same height same size so that if I put if I put this one or this one underneath the key it's the same same effect and now when I put the weight up on it the ruler to see which keys aren't level it's only resting technically on it should just be on these two and now the other ones I can see which ones are too low and then I can raise them just when I when I test just pushing there it's silent so it's not touching so I need to raise that one that's all right so all right and make that one a little bit higher See, yeah, we need to go higher, 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 higher. So then to do that, I'm just going to take the paper cuttings that came along with still in this piano and are not too deteriorated. I've got a bunch of them and I'll put them by the balance rail on the keys that are too low. And I'm going to move up along the keyboard because particularly over here, it's so much lower than what's going on over here. And if it's the same height from the keyboard, they should end up all being equal. Assuming that, that this board on its own is level and straight. So I'll see if this is. And then I'll also be having a look at the level in the bubble here. So when it's on those two... I mean, it's not smack in the middle, but it's still between the two lines there, so. After the first leveling and much more accurate process, you can see I've got them all perfectly aligned. So that's the first, uh, first, first about 20, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this one in here and then put this in another key, you know, for the length. And proceed like so and then balance them and then carry on to the rest and inside here I've got all the cuttings and I put the same one now at a different spot and you can just see this huge key height difference and so I'll repair this section or oh, just add the cuttings it took oh, just over an hour um, but all the keys are leveled and I'm very happy with the result. I mean, this, this gaps between the keys are still irregular, but just this height difference has made such a difference for how the keys look. It looks so much neater. So this action is terribly sticky. So if I push the silencing bar, 
and you'll see all the key keys, hammers that remain behind. That yeah, there's a there's a number that just do not return, and then no, it's not a uniform return for the others either. Very delayed. So I'll see if there are. Try to take what I can apart and see if there's any tightening of joints that I can possibly loosen to to try fix this. I'm going to focus. I'm going to focus on these base key because they don't they don't return on their own. You can just put them there and they they'll get stuck. So. I'm going to fix it, try fix this one first and see if it, anything changes. I've taken out the weapon and the spring was released, but apart from that, the spring is in good condition and the joints are moving smoothly. This one is quite loose, but I think it's still good. What was a, what is a problem in the hammer is that this joint is really tight. Um, so, I mean, there, there's almost, it's, it's very stiff. I mean, it's rolling a little bit now, maybe after some, some, I'm not sure. I'm going to try and push the, the pin, I'm just trying to get some focus, trying to push the pin in and out and see if that helps loosen the joint. I can see a bit of the felt is sticking out. But yes, a piece of the felt of this back hammer has become worn away. And so I think I'll try stick a bit of felt in, glue a bit of felt inside there, uh, retaining the rest because I'm, I'm not sure I'll be able to replicate the height, but just to provide a little bit of support for when the whipping is pushing against there. Right, so this moves a lot smoother now. What I did is um, I took this fine point and just pushed it through, pushed the, the, pin, the pin through so it protruded a bit on the other side and then um, I just pushed it back in and pushed it in and out to both sides and through that process a little bit of the felt came out um, which was causing the, the tension now it moves a bit smoother um, I'm going to put it back in and see if that is good or if I need to try a bit more and it's a bit of a sloppy job but um, there's the felt re, re put in um, yeah I hope it I'm sure it's better than nothing, and if it comes out, I'll just do a neater job applying more felt, but right now it'll prevent it from breaking up completely, and there's just a touch of wood glue on it, uh, as you can see, far set, so I'm not too worried about that, but it's it's the motion that I want to see, see changed. I returned the dam action, so I had to unscrew here to get the weapon. It was extremely finicky to get it back in. Um, I had to then I let learn I had to bend the damper string forward, and I mistook this screw for taking out the hammer. But meanwhile, it only took out the damper, and it was there's nothing wrong with them now that I see, apart from the faults being quite loosened, just in bad condition. But they are. They're all working when when the key is pushed. Um, apart from here, I saw it was moving too, but it's no longer moving the two. Um, and the screw to remove the hammer is, is concealed by the weapon. But it was quite funny to get them back in. But if one to look, look at the first three, this is the one that I, I adjusted. And if I were to push them back, the middle one, the one that I fixed, that one returns immediately just as it should. But I see now another problem. The back checker, this red felt is not at all touching the catcher, which is this piece of wood here. And 
this is what it should be doing, although the contact on these ones are quite poor. Um, but I see what the problem is, and it is this fault that I had added. Uh, struggling to focus it. Um, yeah, so, so through here. It's not that precise one, um, but it's this felt, and the thing is, it's getting stuck on that felt instead of running this, the, this jack should be running up along there where the screwdriver is, um, because that's what allows the, the check, but it is clearly getting stuck there. It's not running up like it should, and then the back check can't can't go as it should, and then the hammer is stuck too forward. It can't release and let the strings uh, vibrate. So I think I'll need to actually just take a bit of that felt off instead of adding more, so that it can just run up. But I'll I'll leave that f the felt in the back check for later and see if I can just repair the return you know I did this one and it comes back just as it should but this one you know these hammers they're getting stuck so I'll see what if I can make them more loose there was in fact nothing wrong with the felt itself um, so the incorrect motion here if one if I push it a little bit forward that's how it should be going should be working um, so it should be at rest here but so that's that's the motion of the key but then or, or, or you know pushing up like so but then it falls back all the way down and then gets stuck underneath it now why it's happening and I, I, I knew all of these bridle straps were out you know, they, they begin here, and they are glued um, on just here, underneath there. And if these bridle straps are replaced, then this cannot fall back so far. It'll fall just to, you only need to measure it, just to the right amount, and then that will keep it going. So if the bridle straps are replaced, these felts are in the correct positions. Be putting the action in. I'm just showing the tightness of the keys beforehand and seeing if that makes a difference in any of the action. So clearly the A flat and the A are a bit stuck, but we'll see. How it looks with the action on. So I've not put the action, uh, you know, I've not sc screwed it back in, but you can see the how bad it is without these bridle straps that none of the back checkers are are touching. But you see, this is these are the keys that I have added new bridle straps where the mice have taken them all away. And if one can see the difference so this this key this was the stiffest one that a flat and it's not to do with the action because the moment the key is raised the action is going back so I just know that's it's literally the sticky, sticky key I just need to make the felt looser inside that one uh, this key surprisingly there's nothing wrong with the key but somewhere in the action it's getting stuck so I'll need to investigate that one because even when I push the key up um, it stays it stays stuck so not quite sure what's going on with that one This one is somewhat slow repeat, but yeah, 
it's exciting to to get some of the to get the action going again so I have to struggle to to get these glued in because I'm gluing them just behind just behind underneath here that's where they go and it's really tricky I think I'm it I've been doing it so far without taking the action apart but I think I might need to do that to be able to glue it in properly but it's just tough to measure so that's how it's sort of looking if I just take just for fun So you can see by these where new bridle shafts, new bridle shafts have been added. Uh, not many of them have been loosened, but all of these ones have been entirely taken out and loosened. And when I push the silencing bar, look at the huge difference in the uniform return of the bridle straps of the hammers that I've redone versus how irregular these all come back so it's definitely made a huge progress and you can see just these these handful that I don't have vital steps you can already see them coming back later so it's definitely working but it's just really quite time-consuming take quite long to take the hammers um, and then push through with the needle to loosen them up because there's been a lot of swelling going on. Um, but the hammers are quite a lot easier, but the weapons are a bit, bit more challenging when they are stiff. But, you know, it's, it's clearly working and, and worth it. So I'll just try vary it up by working on the keys and then coming back to these. So these are the functional keys that have these two um, and they've been, but these have been loosened um, properly. So all the joints, you know, they, they should be working all good. indication of the condition it's in <clears throat> I'm taking away taking off the piece the action um, to inspect it and you can see uh, how dirty it is there's like mice feces and whatnot but um, over here you can see pieces have been replaced um, and this is well to hold the wire it's just come loose but suppose it'll still work I mean because I'm not going to be able to get probably find another part like that and then um, the one weapon you can see it's new wood here instead of the other piece so you know there's and and all of these make me inclined to believe that you know this is still all the original action from the piano and then 
just those parts that have been broken down have been replaced and in by the damper strings or the, the damper um, uh, felt. It's clearly been eaten away by some insects um, and inside some of them the insect carcasses remain but you know I've cleaned most of them out the ones that I've removed so far but and some rust on the or something but yeah. So out of, out of the keys that I've redone um, I see that I've been putting or the hammer hasn't been positioned correctly so most of them and so I'm, I just need to fix it all I need to do is twist the hammer key so it's that screw over there um, and if I loosen that, then it will allow me to twist to adjust the hammer position left or right. And so I do that, um, almost like I've adjusted the weapon, like the back checker, to align with the hammer. So I suppose once I've realigned the hammers, I'm going to have to realign the, the weapons again. So it will just involve... Um, taking the entire action out and then undoing these damper strings that are the dampers and then um, taking out the weapons and then adjust putting putting the action back in and then adjusting these because with the weapons that jack is it covers the screw so it's quite challenging to reach it there and I thought I won't I won't fiddle with that while it's in with all together, so I'll just take it apart. There. I've sanded the, the hammers, the these few, and you can see that's the condition roughly of them before. Very deep uh, skin, skin, string grains, but there's some of them are still visible here, but um, there's an, at least on these, there's not too much room, so I don't want to take it, take too much away. Before and I haven't touched any of these treble ones because there's there's barely any felt left on them. So probably need to get some, try get some, find some more of that. Um, but from these couple, they've been sanded first with um hundred, and then. 120 isn't much difference but then I would just go um, down and then up and then just up and down right on the string marks to try get them away but they even though I took took a bit quite a bit off um, the marks are still showing but at least for touch you can't feel the grooves anymore like you can easily feel them over here so I'll do so much, perhaps more, because the the base, the ba lower the lower one goes, the more space there are, the more felt there is remaining. Um, so I'll just go through those bit by bit. So it's a, I've been sanding, I've sanded all of these, all of these. Um, so you can see the string grooves and I've basically, you know, they're, they're still evident but I don't want to sand it all away and you can't feel them um, like these like these ones can be felt. Um, so in any event it's better than how it was uh, and I haven't touched these since there's practically no felt to sand away but these ones are have been sanded sanded and the hammers now sanded and the dampers and the weapons now removed then I was able to use the screwdriver and loosen those the hammers there and readjusting them and now while it maybe doesn't look perfect when it's like so um, the touch is allowing at least 
all three strings to be touching. Uh, although this key number, hammer number 54, it's loose like so, the whole uh, piece, but it's fully tightened. So I think I might, when I take this out, put uh, slight pieces of paper underneath it to allow it while the screw is fully tightened for the actual device to be but um, it's getting the full all three strings touching and none of the hammers are obstructing one another so these are the keys that i've corrected when gluing the bridle straps just using plain gem chem or contact adhesive and I first put glue on the bridle straps and then let it dry completely and then I put on a second because it's quite porous a second and then one around this area on the hammers and then after letting it the glue dry I touch dry then I just place them on and it glues instantly and at about this distance I haven't cut them at all that's how I got them from the packet this length and placing them at this distance has worked to to give them the right bit of movement and I haven't and if I did need to do any adjustments and out of the f these I've done so far I only need to do two, about two then one can just bend this wire here to give the bridle strap make it longer or shorter the felt at the back of the hammers, a few of them have deteriorated and so I just scrape them off with this blade and then I just put some normal wood glue at the end and then a piece of the felt which I've cut, I just glue on. Of all the hammers that I've, or even weapons, all the action pieces that I've been repairing, this is the perhaps the most troublesome one I needed to reflect a bit for while what I'm going to do because the the pin itself the flange it's loose very loose but then it reaches the halfway point and then it gets completely stuck and then it can move on again and then on inspection it appears that uh, sorry for the camera work there but the the, the base is there's some kind of cracking or damaging and I, th I think it's that this top piece is actually getting stuck on that swelling from the cracking and so this is the first one that I'm, I'm going to actually take the pin completely out um, and then I'll see if the, the, the base of the hammer is too large and I'll see if I can make it a bit sand it down or make it smaller and then put some wood glue in the cracks to prevent it from getting any worse and uh, try put the see how I can put the needle back in either with the hammer with my fingers or with pliers I'll see which one so I removed it by pushing what I could out with this and then the bit that was protruding um, I used pliers, but I wrapped the pin around with felt um, so that it wouldn't damage it. And that is, that's the little pin. Seems alright, it's not bent, so at least it's not going straight. And then I sand it around here a little bit, and you can see below that hole where there's a little bit of glue. That there was another hole on both sides going through and I just wonder what that was doing there. Um, it wasn't changing anything but it just closed, closed up the ends a little bit and then the crack up top. I placed some more glue and um, just wait for that to dry and then I'll try to uh, return this because I've I sanded it a bit with just 100 sandpaper and then it moved smoothly as I as I could feel holding it in the joint without the pin in but yeah protruding from this damper board 
are these wires. Um, and the purpose of these wires is to help push the hammers back when they come forward. And, you know, these wires, they've been back, but that's all right. But one of them is, or at least one of them over here, is broken short. And so the hammers, they're supposed, the wires, they rest inside here to prevent them falling from left or left or right while it's pushing on them and on at least one of the hammers but at another one um, now it's not reaching there so I've glued little bits two little pieces of uh, toothpick that I just broke off with pliers um, and now that the wire re doesn't reach in here anymore because it's broken shorter, so it'll reach in there, and that'll still push the hammer back, but prevent it from going left and right. I got it back in, and it's moving, moving smoothly. There's no hitches anymore, and I could put it through the out this outside piece with my hands, and then what I did is I just twisted the needle or pin, and then that got some of the felt out through friction. And then um, um, to open up just the ends because we had sand, it probably like closed up a bit. Then I just pushed with this this pin inside the base part, and I got it in pretty easily. So I have put back this whole middle section, uh, and the problem seems to be that the hammers are getting stuck on the dampers and I don't I don't really understand why it's doing that um, because I mean these aren't even the original size of the hammers they would they would have even more felt so even in this in their smaller size why they're getting stuck um, it just doesn't make sense and if you look, you can see on these, like the red felt is sticking out. So on the one side, it's been getting stuck on. I've snipped it um, just so that it's cleaner because it didn't have any purpose to be that long. But that didn't fix the problem. And then I did sand a little bit underneath, but I don't think that's the way to really solve it. And I'm not going to sand the hole underneath of all the hammers away because... Like I said, it, it should it should be able to function with even more felt, so I shouldn't need to take it off to work out is. Um, so I'm going to put it in the piano and see if this is just while I'm testing it here, but when it's in the piano, it won't get stuck. I'll see. And just look at this beautiful hammer return with the keys of the bridle strap, all, all the white, uh, none of those. But watch the uniform return versus the ones that don't have it. Major. Coming back instantly. And it's not just because of the vital strap, it's because there were also parts that were too tight and those have also been loosened. So it's actually, I'm actually done over half of the, the action pieces. So it's quite good. I've been needing to get this key slip out or the key protector and it's by four bolts. That's for the lock, but the lock can come out. But four long bolts and it's underneath the piano so I didn't, know, I didn't realize that I could take it out before but here's just the indication of the sort of dirt that is being gathered underneath because I didn't have a video of the piano before I was cleaning it um, but you know this is the sort of untouched parts because I realized you can see now how unlevel a bunch of the keys are um, and that I need to uh, space them because these are different and I couldn't have been able to do that conveniently without this key slip open. But yeah. So these are the hammers in the process of gluing the bridle straps on. They're waiting with the glue to dry, Jim Kim. This is the action of the piano, how it's looking with none of the parts 
in it's basically all the base and how they're the damper spoons on the dampers but how they move with the damper pedal one can see over here and one just pushes this bar down or was it up here and then moves all the pedals um, and then all the whippings that are in good condition not too tight and I've sanded them down as well so all the vinyl straps are on except for these this last end part straps on hammer sanded felt and weapons in uh, I'm not so happy with how the felt the the dampers are because they some a lot of them rub on each other um, so they're really close and then sometimes and they're even pushing the, the one back while one is moving so but that's not too critical at this point that's that's just part of the fine tuning after a couple quite a few hours of repairs all the bridle straps and was repairing and returning immediately I've gotten the pedals to work so if I'm pushing the dampers all the dampers are moving and I'm pushing the silencing pedal and hammers go closer with pretty easy fix I barely I don't even need to look up try look up how to fix it um, so this is the silencing bar comes through and it's quite challenging to show there but in any event it's once you just open our bottom cover this this had come loose and off so just put it in there and try to match it with the other one and you can see that the, the pins here beams it's really just to get it in between a hole and underneath here how it's attached it's just a straight down with a little hook little hook bend to prevent it from coming through and then at the tip there it's not a bolt going all the way through but it's just a little point to keep it from bouncing up so that this can still pivot down and then it pushes a stick but this is in two separate sticks so it's one at the bottom here and then a new one up top there a pretty easy fix Oh, just put together again yeah. just scraped off the felt protect just under the key key slip you can see how deteriorated it was um, and so I had some felt and conveniently it's the perfect size it was what I was using for my digital piano um, and it ends up the exact the precise length it's very convenient and so I'm going to use some contact adhesive to glue that on to the to the base. Well, it was a bit of a messy glue um, you know, underneath, but it's all dry, it dries right and now it looks good as it is here, you know, and, uh, underneath, but one can't see that, so quite happy with the new felt. Now on this E, there is a problem that I believe is to be called lost motion. So if I had to push these two in both slowly, so it's not sounding, look at that huge difference. And yet, when I begin pushing it, the back check is going immediately. It's got so much space. So I believe this is lost motion. So just that little bit, then it's already moving. Meanwhile, this one. So I'm going to try fix it by. Uh, I'll take out this key quick. I thought I'd redo the video, but it's fine. Um, just have to take out with one hand. So this back back check there. Uh, I'm just going to try turn it up and see if that will solve the problem. 
And yes, there we go. It's very easy to turn um, in the holes. I mean, I first initially used just a little screwdriver thing, but then I could just use my hands. It's it's not that tight. Um, but just that, that difference. Now when I push it, that was the same E and they're going to the correct distance. So it will actually be quite easy to regulate the distance that the hammers are going because the system, the action system, it's all actually working right. It's just now these butts at the end. So you can see this is the one that I've, that I've adjusted, just made it higher and I made this one a bit lower because it was going, it was stopping a bit too close to the strings. Um, so say now this one, this one I'd need to adjust a bit more, but that's, it's really quick. I mean, it's like, it's like instantly fixed. So I'll just go through these and just adjust that the hammers are at the right distance. I mean, the gaps between the keys have been, or, or getting them equal sizes because you can clearly see these are different size gaps between the keys. Um, I mean, it's a huge difference. So to try to solve this, you know, I could try push it to what looks right, and then push the it, one pushes these these pins underneath, left or right, um, and I can do that. But then I feel like if I make it too tight all the way, then once I get to the end, then there will be too much space left. Or if I make it too loose, then there's too little space there, so it won't be equal. So what I did is I measured the length from the end of this piece of wood here to there and I got that as 122.2 um, centimeters. I initially measured the white keys as 2.2 centimeters and now there are 52 of the white keys because in the consideration for the gaps between here I don't need to um, account for the black keys even though I measured it but that's not necessary at this point because it's, it's I'm just focusing on this part of the piano um, and so there's 52 so then I took that size the size of the key times by 52 subtracted that from the overall size of the key span and then I took that gap size and divided by 53 because there's a gap onto the left of each white key and then the final one has a gap to the left and then to the right. So it's, it's 52 white keys, but 53 gaps. And then I got uh, my first number as 1.47 millimeters, but that turned out being, being too large because uh, I've got a digital piano and I, you know, the key, the key sizes are the same. And then the gap is not so big as 1.47 millimeters. But my the formula is correct. So when I remeasured, I thought perhaps maybe the key is a different size. Um, and you see, like depending on on how it's measured, it could be a, a half a millimeter. If I if I use the same calculation with just half a millimeter larger key, then my key gap needs to be 0.98 millimeters. Um, and that's not precisely. You know, it's, it's quite a big difference. It's almost half a millimeter difference in each gap. So then I, I first tried paper, folding it, um, but paper is not good because it might hold the space, but then it gets compressed. So it can fit inside these tiny gaps, but it can also fit just as well inside these huge gaps. So I thought I'd use perhaps the ruler thinness, but uh, or, or trying to find a really thin wood or gluing some sheets of plastic together. But if I just take the knife, um, it's basically one millimeter. And it's a little bit larger than this calculation, but almost that one. So uh, if I use the knife as the placeholders for the gaps, and what is convenient is that I've got quite a number of these so I can place them um, between the keys to hold their place while I'm bending the other ones and uh, I'll go through it all the way with these knives in between as, the, as my place markers and I'll see if, if I'll end up with the correct amount of space at the end if I start at one, start on the left and go to the right 
and then they should be all equal uh, one millimeter or the knife blades distance apart because I've taken this uh, up my digital piano and it fits in between the keys without um, moving them left or right so we've done this spacing of um, two of the keys um, there, I just didn't put in directly straight but then I've already run into the first problem so the key has become so bent in order to have the correct spacing that it can't that p the the key can't go down anymore. Um, so I'm not sure now whether I'm supposed to be starting from the middle and doing this. I'll have to think about this a bit more. After some consideration, I thought perhaps I was overthinking the process, that they would not end up aligning, that they will go too close, or I didn't know what gaps they should be. So I was trying to work out the formulas and things, and trying to be too perfectionistic with measurements. And so I just went by eye now, and already you can see it's <laughs> it looks really it looks really good. Um, I'm not quite happy with this end section. Um, but if one goes, you know, it's done, it's done by eye. Um, just adjusting the gaps that looked really big and then the ones that looked really small. And that's the end result. Um, you know, I know the gaps aren't all equal, but from key to key, it looks all right. So, you know, if one hand isn't going to be feeling a, a big difference between any of them. And right now, aesthetically, it's it's not um, so obstructing. I mean, there's there's some or two, but it it's strange because um, you know the the keys at the ends, they they the gaps are the same, but then at the tops it looks a lot worse. Um, but yet the key top isn't skew, um, which I'd need to bend these pins for. But you know that's that's how it's looking after the squaring. And the keys, the keys are all um, level. Yeah. So when I push down the key, the strings are supposed to, the, the damper, that thing at the back, is supposed to move off the strings to allow it to vibrate. The hammer knocks it, and a hammer moves off to allow the string to vibrate. Just like that. Uh, and when the key moves, hammer moves, watch this let off, it, it moves a bit back, Chup. so that's the let off, and I think it's the right distance because I know it's playing right, but this, now, this one's let off occurs so late that when you push the note, it actually doesn't let off yet, and it stops the note from sounding properly because the hammer is still sitting on the strings should be letting off to go to move off afterwards and the way to adjust this I believe um, do you see the, underneath these pins these jacks over here um, these little knobs you just turn them and then that will adjust with the let off occurring earlier or later so I'll try that out and see if it works. Just a few days because I <laughs> I tried to move this uh, those those screws. I mean, but you can't even you can barely you can't reach them. Um, you can you can touch them like that, but the ones in the middle and whatnot, it's now impossible to to turn them. Long nose pliers, all the tools we've got are useless, and so um, you know I can't get those the piano made repair tools and so I thought let me just take a piece of wire and make my own tool and you know with some pliers I bent it so that it can catch catch the screw and so and so I inserted it it's just too dark to record but um, 
you know, I can reach it. I can reach it in there and then turn it. And so for this one, I've adjusted the back check, oh, adjusted the lid off. And so now it's, I, I turned it actually too much, so it goes quite far too early. So I can just turn it back to make it a bit further. Um, because something it should, I don't know, the Americans, it says something like a quarter of eighth of an inch or something, but it's very close. But so this is f way too far away. But when the key is pushed down, it still goes too far. And so um, it still gets stuck there regardless of when the let off occurs. And so I thought perhaps now the key dip is too much. But I don't, I'm not, I don't think so, in fact. So what it could be is that the, this back check was too forward. Um, So I'll, I'll fit it on with the back check and see if that will change whether this key is here or if I must change the key, key dip that it's practically touching the string when it's fully down and shouldn't be doing that. And see now when I push the key all the way, it can still knock. And that's just from uh, moving the back checker this year. So, uh, you know, one can pull it at the top, but it just try. I try try bend it, the wire at the bottom so that it isn't so it bends pro properly instead of just at the at the right at the top. But um, you know, look at that difference. So that you know, if I just adjust the lid off, it should become good. Now it's turned just to the right amount. See, the lid off is just before the strings. It's fully pushed in, there's room for the string to vibrate. So this key is now optimal.
Thank you.